yeah, these these, these um, proficient and um, battle hardened, if you will, ransomware actors are in high demand, especially when these services get shut down. The more and more small groups that enter in this space, the more diverse the space becomes, the harder it is for defenders to be able to handle. It's fine if there's five or 10 ransomware variants, but if we're talking about 50, 75, 100 different groups that are out there operating, it creates a much more challenging environment for everyone. Hello and welcome to episode one of the Talos Threat Perspective, a monthly dive into the threats and topics that impact us all. I'm Hazel Burton and on today's show, we're going to explore three of the biggest trends in ransomware today. We identified 14 of the most prolific ransomware actors and this is all based on Talos threat hunting, our Cisco Talos incident response reporting and also open source reporting. We crafted profiles for each actor, including their victimology, their TTPs as mapped to the MITRE framework, the tools that they tend to leverage, and also the critical vulnerabilities that they tend to exploit. Now, Talos has a blog that goes alongside this episode where you can find all of the in-depth findings. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to choose three of the biggest reveals in the report. Number one, what are the main differences between all of these ransomware groups? And how does the affiliate program affect all of that? So Black Hat and Reseda stood out as um, having the broadest range of tactics, techniques, and procedures. Um, whereas groups like Blackbuster uh, and Lockbit not only encrypted data, but also engaged in uh, victim system defacement. So takedowns of websites, DDoSs, things like that, uh, to maximize the impact of their extortion. And distinctively, uh, Clot, for example, is primarily focused on extortion through data theft rather than encryption tactics as well as being one of the only actors to exploit zero day vulnerabilities like the, the go anywhere um, vulnerability. With affiliate models becoming the norm, uh, which is where um, threat actors will buy in to, to these kind of groups to have access to their um, suite of tools. For example, Lockbit has got um, an information stealer as well as an encryptor. These affiliates are not necessarily as technologically advanced or inclined um, and are more opportunistic. So what we're seeing is um, command and control um, activities, often utilizing these commercially available tools, such as AnyDeath, which don't require the c custom uh, C2 backdoors um, and a high level of technical uh, proficiency. And a lot of these affiliates tend to go wherever the money is the greatest. And some affiliates will target things that others won't. So you have affiliates that are willing to go after critical infrastructure, that are willing to go after hospitals, willing to go after various targets, and then you'll have others that are not. But I mean, in the end, they're criminals and they want to make money. So depending on the desperation of the actor and the group, there is likelihood that anyone will be targeted. Finding number two, the tremendous amount of focus that all of the actors, especially the affiliate ones, are placing on two key tactics, initial access, and defense evasion. One of the biggest things is more and more, and this is true in the ransomware landscape, also true in the state-sponsored APT landscape, credentials and identity are becoming a bigger and bigger part of this. Adversaries don't want to use exploits. Adversaries would much rather log in with legitimate credentials and leverage that to launch their attacks. So the protections that you can put in place for identity are going to become increasingly important. Looking for anomalies in logins, looking at the dates, the times, the locations. One of the most significant activities that we see is OS credential dumping through the um, local security authority subsystem service, which is LSAS, uh, which enables attackers to escalate privileges by pilfering the stored credentials uh, to gain access to, to more and more sensitive resources. And finding number three, we found three of the most common vulnerabilities that ransomware actors will typically exploit. So if you're doing a CVE audit, make sure that at least these three vulnerabilities are patched. The uh, zero logon vulnerability uh, focuses on initial access and privilege escalation, like exploiting these public facing applications. The second 
uh, vulnerability that we identified as being heavily targeted by threat actors was the um, Fortinet 40 OS uh, SSL VPN vulnerability. Um, so this is a pass traversal vulnerability um, that allows unauthenticated attackers to access system files. Ransomware groups have exploited this um, vulnerability to obtain sensitive information such as VPN tokens, um, which can be used to gain unauthorized access and allow the chaining of different vulnerabilities as they move through the network. And the uh, final CVE that we saw uh, most heavily used was the uh, Go Anywhere Managed File Transfer vulnerability that was uh, leveraged heavily by CLOP. This tactic it focuses on initial access as well as the execution phase of um, the ransomware attack chain. Um, so exploiting the, the MFT software allows um, remote attackers to execute arbitrary code on the server without requiring authentication. So aside from the study, I want to take a broader view of the ransomware landscape at the moment. So I asked Nick to talk to me about the good, the bad, and the ugly side of ransomware attacks at this moment in time. So the good is generally we're getting better at stopping ransomware. So the industry is catching up. Detection is catching up. Organizations are now better suited than they've ever been to be able to recover from a ransomware attack. What this has done, though, is driving a lot of the larger groups to not just look at ransomware or even not look at ransomware at all and focus instead on data exfiltration because there is no recovery from data exfiltration. And then from an ugly perspective, that draws in more on those groups, right? The more and more small groups that enter in this space, the more diverse the space becomes, the harder it is for defenders to be able to handle. It's fine if there's five or 10 ransomware variants, but if we're talking about 50, 75, 100 different groups that are out there operating, it creates a much more challenging environment for everyone. Now, many people are aware, of course, of the recent law enforcement operations against some of these ransomware groups. Uh, there was Lockbit. Uh, Lockbit has been disrupted twice already in 2024. And there was also the FBI operation against Black Hat in December of last year. So what effects are these disruptions and operations having on these ransomware groups? And what are the effects within the groups themselves? Yeah, these, these, these um, proficient and um, battle-hardened, if you will, ransomware actors are in high demand, especially when these services get shut down. Um, affiliates are there to make money and they're not getting arrested. So there is not really much of a dissentive for them to stop doing what they're doing. If people started getting arrested, I could definitely see it having an impact. But if we're just seizing assets and not arresting people, all they're going to do is retool and come back again. And unfortunately, in a lot of these spaces, they're operating in places where they're not going to be held accountable. And unfortunately, it's not really going to have much of a material impact until things like that start happening. It makes it a very difficult place for defenders to be. You just have to do your diligence and make sure you try and minimize any impact that happens from these incidents. Focus on free ransomware detection. Detect it before it gets bad. Detect the initial access. Detect the lateral movement before they're doing data gathering, before they're doing exfiltration. That's really your best bet. For more guidance around that and a full analysis of the 14 ransomware actors that we profiled in the study, do visit the blog that is in the description of this video. And also do subscribe to the Talos YouTube channel if you'd like to get more episodes of the Talos Threat Perspective. Thank you for watching.